So the picture I want to present to you is in some parts of the world there is either saturation in terms of how much they can consume because they have already been highly industrialized, developed economies which were consuming fairly large amounts of energy per capita. And then you have a population like us and you have economic activity which is requiring and the growth is thrice as fast. So you have to provide for it. So I think on all these fronts taken together, that's how we have managed energy security so far. And today, as I said, if we had the conversation a year ago, I would have sounded a little more tentative. Today I can say with a degree of confidence that going forward, India is where an incentive. The state is serious about complex parties for a variety of reasons. I think we need to take advantage. So I hope I haven't deflected your answer too much. I've gone into too many other areas. Thank you. Thanks, uh, uh, sir. Uh, sir, uh, on your final sir, Net zero for the country uh, by 2070, and that's become a very major driving force for the energy transition phenomena across the world. And I'm sure, and we are also seeing the same phenomena unfolding in India as well. Uh, we'll be very excited to uh, hear from you on what are the thus, some of the other steps that have been taken to drive net zero. See, I am not a climate negotiator, but I used to be a trade negotiator. What happens is that all the people who want to do good in the world, including the climate negotiators, they set themselves targets. And I think everybody rallies around, they have meetings in what are called... It's a little time, but there's no point in my talking about an alliance like this, unless I'm ready myself as a biofuel manufacturer. Today, I think we are the fourth or fifth largest biofuel manufacturer. You know much more about this than I am. But today I can tell you with confidence, then we are absolutely open now. Because if you are producing, see what happens when we produce, or rather, in short, 10% of biofuel blending. I saved 40,000 crores or thereabouts of imports. And I was able to pay, we were able to pay our farmers 41,000 crores. So you're not only doing something good in terms of green fuel, but you're also helping the agriculture sector. What will be the prices when you do 20% blending, depending on? what the global thing is. But you know, there are <laughs> colleagues of mine, including in the OMCs, who tell me that this 20% fixation we should get rid of. There is no issue. So I tell them, no, there is no issue. 20% blending is because we calculated how much ethanol you require for blending up to 20%. I am coming to the heart of your answer question. And we worked out that you require 1,000 crore liters. And we worked out that if that time when we started, we had 455 crores liters, we have to produce the differential between 1,000 crore liters and 455. And we said, we will ensure an offtake. Now, on your, we will ensure an offtake means you produce it and we will buy it to achieve that 20% value. But nothing prevents you from producing more. And if an international market develops, for you to sell it on your own. But there are a lot of guys here in my, among my team who say, you know, we will actually provide much more of an input as this person. I said slowly. Because when you move from no ethanol blending to 1.4% to 10% to 20%, there are there is traditional resistance which you face going forward.